very powerful subject today. Some of y'all has, has only come a few times and think it's the only thing I talk about, but it's not. Uh, before I get started, I, want, I just want to tell you, I need you to know, so you can be praying, and also, just, it's better this way. Everybody knows Beth, my daughter. Just so to stop any rumor meals or anything that's going on, my Beth, my Beth got arrested. All right? So here's all I want you to do for me. Here's what I need you to do for her and for us. She's 24 years old. She's out of my hands in that aspect, but she's not out of God's hands. She's still out of my, out of my heart and out of my ability to help what I can. But here's what I need you to do. Number one is pray. Pray. You hear me? Pray. Number two is if you have any questions, instead of going to each other and asking, ask me. You got any questions, just ask me. If I know the answer, I'll give it to you. If I don't, I'll tell you I don't know it. Number three, if you have to hear the rumor mill, you know what your job is? Stop the rumor mill. Because here's our chance. This is an opportunity for Bethany to step up. Okay? But number two, this is a chance for us to become a vehicle of grace and a, and a community of compassion versus a vehicle of confusion. Amen. Amen. Because I can tell you my heart's broke. I've done a lot of crying over this. So don't think I'm up here and just look like everything's fine and dandy. It's not. One side of me wants to strangle her. The other side of me wants to pick her up and love on her. Because as dads always do, I said, I told you. Okay? So now, she's been arrested. She's not ever, She's out right now. But I just, and just again, I'd much rather you come to me and ask me straight out what's going on than for you to go to somebody else. Because I guarantee you, you know... Uh, a, a rumor can travel around the world three times before the truth has a chance to put its shoes on. Amen. Okay, so just 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 come to me. I'm not trying to hide it. She's there. No, if I don't think they got the jailbird anymore, if they do, she'll be in the way. Okay. 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 So so just remember that's for it. But so today, and I thought that out of all times for this to happen, and I've been spending a lot of time with her. Spent a lot of time with her yesterday. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was probably 3 o'clock in the morning before I got through even her mother and I doing some stuff working for on her behalf. But it was 10 o'clock last night before we got to do working with her at 3 o'clock in the morning because she's out. So just remember, just be praying, okay? And again, remember, we are a community of compassion. Okay? Matter of fact, just remember this. Here's what I think. Well, Daniel, actually, this is kind of funny. Daniel was trying to make me feel better. Daniel said, you remember all the stupid things we did? <laughs> he said, you remember all the times we had the law bring us home and all these people talk to us and tell you how our young ones are doing us. I said, yeah, Daniel. He says, oh, well, Daniel, are we free now? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, no. <laughs> hers, is, hers is a biggie. Hers is once, but it's a biggie. But y'all... Got a long string. Matter of fact, it can stretch. It can stretch from here to Chocolate Way. Amen. If you put y'all together, we can go places. Amen. <laughs> so we're going to talk about attitude today. Again, somebody say, "Wow, we love to talk about attitude." Tell somebody where. I'm going to talk about attitude. Every time I talk about attitude, somebody else happens. And so uh, last week I was telling you on Thursday how, or, or Tuesday how when I started talking about attitude how all these things came to, to affect my attitude. And Bethany was involved in some of them but not to this degree. And Thursday night I was on the way home and my biggest decision on the way home was should I have barbecue chicken or fried chicken? <laughs> and then I get this phone call and then the chicken didn't matter anymore. Okay, so, so look, get your Bibles out. Stand for the reading of the Word. We're going to start a series. Matter of fact, I had no plans of doing this. This was not in the agenda. And last week, the Lord started dealing with me about talking about our attitude. And you normally, like today, it's going to be uh, a, a, a overall general attitude sermon. But starting in the weeks to come, how many ever heard these people have a defeated attitude? Or these people have a guilty attitude? Or these people have a harsh attitude? Well, coming up in the weeks to come, I'm not even sure what it's going to be called, probably uh, your outlook, but it's going to be dealing with outlook and, and how you handle things, and, and it's going to start with those with a guilty attitude. How many in here has ever had a guilty attitude? Oh, yeah. Amen? Oh, yeah. if, if, when I said that, if you felt the need to do this, 
You've had it some time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Philippians 4. Is everybody cool? Everybody ready? Mm. The community of compassion. Yeah. Community of compassion. All right. Yeah. Amen. Is everybody hot? Amen. 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 Can, we, can we do a little bit of something about that, Brother Eddie? Okay. The attitude is show Philippians 4, <laughs> verse 11. Not that I'm speaking in respect of what, but I have learned. Y'all say learned. Learn. Sometimes you can't tell you. Sometimes you've got to learn. Bethany right now is learning. Okay? But the bad part is daddy is learning too. And daddy don't like going to class when he don't have to. Okay. Uh, I have learned. Sometimes God says just telling you is not enough. How I many here, most of the time, the first time you hear it, you got it. And you won't go the other way ever again. There's no hands up here. Okay. Well, there's one. Well, we know, we're, talking, we're talking about the attitude of lying later, Dan. <laughs> He's smiling. You know. Okay. Now that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. For I know both how to be abased or be at the very bottom, as low as you can get. I know how to be how to abound everywhere and in all things, in church, in my job, in my home. For I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. But here's the key. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I am up to the task is what it's talking about. I'm up to the task through Christ. We're strengthened to be. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We know you're alive and well on the throne, Father. We know, God, that you're working in our midst, Father. There's absolutely nothing impossible for you, Father. I ask you, Lord, right now, Lord, to be with every one of us. Lord, let this word sink deep within us, Lord. Help us, God, to feel and know that your anointing and your power and your presence is here. And help us to know and understand, Father, that you've got a higher plane for us to reach for and a higher plane for us to walk upon. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint in the name of Jesus. We love you. We praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Now, I'm just going to quickly try to talk about a mother's attitude. I know it's, it's 10 minutes to 11. We had communion. So please, I promise you it won't be that long. If it is, please don't have a bad attitude about it. Amen. What time is it? I don't even know. My watch is off. Is it, is it 10 minutes? Is, oh, it's 10 minutes to 1. 12. 12. Oh, okay. 10 minutes to 1. Y'all go ahead and go. No, no, no. 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. A mother's attitude. I'm going to do it quickly now so you got to listen. First, a mother's wardrobe. The first baby, you begin wearing maternity clothes as soon as your doctor confirms your pregnancy. The second baby, you wear your regular clothes as long as possible. The third baby, you return to clothes are your regular clothes. <laughs> Number two, a mom preparing for the birth. First baby, you practice your breathing religiously. The second baby, you don't bother practicing because you remember the last time that breathing thing didn't work. <laughs> third baby, you ask for an epidural in your eighth month. <laughs> Baby's clothing. The first baby, you pre-wash your newborn's clothes, <coughs> color coordinate them, and fold them neatly in the baby's little bureau. Isn't that sweet? Second baby, you check to make sure the clothes are clean, discard any of the ones that have the dirtiest stains. Third baby, can boys wear pink? They can, can't. There you go. Mom's bad attitude. Pacifier. The first baby, if the pacifier falls on the floor, you put it away until you can go home and wash it and boil it. Second baby, when the pacifier falls on the floor, you squirt it with some juice from the baby's bottle. Third baby, you wipe it off on your shirt and pop it back in. <laughs> Diapering. First baby, you change your baby's diapers every hour whether they need it or not. Second baby, you change their diaper every two to three hours if needed. The third baby, you try to change your diaper before others start to complain about the smell. <laughs> well, you see it sagging to their knees. It took me a while to understand when DC come on, he was like any pig. And I had to try to understand that 10 pound, 10 pound diaper did not mean it's how much it would hold. <laughs> Going out, the first baby, the first time you leave your baby with a center, you call the house five times. The second baby.
Amen. If you just, before you walk out the door, you remember to leave a number where you can be reached. The third baby, you leave instructions for the center to call only if she sees blood. <laughs> and the last one, at home. First baby, you spend a good bit of every day just gazing at the baby. The second baby, you spend a little bit every day watching to be sure your older child doesn't squeeze it or poke it or hit the baby. And the third baby, you spend a little bit of time every day hiding from the children. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Mama's attitude. So let, let's talk about attitude. I, I, I promise you I won't keep you long. If I do, like I said, y'all pray for me. Amen. Now, now, how many of you hear the most powerful thing that you possess other than the, than the life of God within you? The life of God within you is the most powerful thing you possess. Alright? But if but, but none of you possess it, it possesses you. Okay, the power of God within you. But not only is that awesome, and that's number one, but number two is your attitude. Well, one of the things that will allow an individual to become successful is their attitude. You know that? Their attitude. Successful people don't have fewer problems there than unsuccessful people. The difference is their mindset. It's how they deal with them. Everybody in here's got problems. If you look, if you got if you got a problem in here, raise your hand. They're not going at it. If you got a problem here, raise your hand. If you don't have a problem, raise your hand. We will pray for you for God to give you one. Because we want y'all to be left out. Amen. No, no. If you got a problem, it's a launch pad for a miracle. So, so it's all in how people deal with their problems. Your attitude can make you and it can break you. It can heal you or hurt you. It can make you friends or make you enemies. It can make you happy or make you miserable. It can make you a success or it can actually make you uh, 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 a failure. So watch this now. Hi, anybody here want to know how to have a bad attitude? I'm going to tell you how to have a bad attitude. If you turn to the book of Philippians chapter 2, we're going to talk about this. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, let this attitude, that's that word mind means, let this attitude be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him, and giving him a name which is above every name. And that his name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess in heaven and earth that he is Lord. So now, so watch this now. If you want to have a bad attitude, get ready. Write these down because you can use these things here will get you through the day in a bad way. Ready? If you have a little bad attitude, watch this now. Allow your attitude to be based on your circumstances. Allow your attitude to be based on your circumstances to be based on what you were going through right now. Number two, adapt to when and then thinking. When I get a new car, when I get a wife, I'll be happy. When I get rid of my wife, I'll be joyous. <laughs> when I find a husband, I'll finally be happy. When I get rid of one, oh God. I'll be happy, okay? When I pay off my bills, when the children are in school, when the children get out of school, I'll put when and then. Uh, uh, when I get over this physical ailment, I'll be happy. That is not, you need to learn to thrive in difficult situations. When you find yourself in the pond of life, and the pond has is, is got uh, waves in it, learn how to sail in the waves. And when, when it feels like it's about to take you under, learn how to fish, have a good time. Number three, you want a bad attitude? Wallow in the pit of worry. Then, how can you tell if you're wall wallowing in the pit of worry? Is what if this happens, or what if that happens, or the worst case scenario? Spend all your time wrapped up in yourself, paralyzed by fear. Don't even think about the verse in Matthew 6 27 that says, Who by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Let everything just get you worried. Matter of fact, I can tell you if you're a worrier, and you say, I can't tell if I'm a worrier or not, do people call you a worry ward? That's a good indication that you got some problems with worry. So now, not only in the pit of worry, number four, consistently put your needs above the needs of others. I think it's all about me attitude. Put your needs above your spouse, above your children, above your co-workers, above your friends, above everybody. Put your needs above them. Be sure you don't get uh, uh, your. Be sure when you don't get your way, throw a fit. 
That'll give you a bad attitude in a heartbeat. Watch this now. Number five, there's only six of them, so I said, Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I'm kind of scared to look up sometimes. <laughs> but I look up, I take my glasses off. Oh, never even glasses. I can still see you. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Number five, don't ever get involved in church. You can show up at Easter and Christmas, but if you go to church mission, you become spiritually enriched and experience the joy of a relationship with God. And get a chance to be with people that's going through the same things like you are. Number six, don't ever think about giving to the Lord or giving to the church. Don't be a generous person. This is how to have a terrible attitude. Just practice these things and you'll be there. Praise God. So if you want a bad attitude, here's your steps. Follow them. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to check yourself. If you answered yes to one or more of the above, then it, your, your, your ability to lead, your ability to love, your ability to do whatever it takes is going to be hindered. So you need to look and we'll look, look and figure out how to adjust what we're going to talk about. So get ready. So here we go. Four steps to super attitude. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> All right. Get ready. That's probably the first step. <laughs> By saying praise God? Yeah. Okay, there you go. First step, praise God. Watch this now. Romans 8, 28 says, We know too that all things cooperate for the good of those who love the Lord. Cooperate, work hand in hand. See, it's out over Bethany. It hurts. I've shed tears. You know, I, I've had that. And I know that I'm the only one that ever wants to side wants to strangle her. I know I'm not holding like the rest of y'all. But I love her. But you know what? I know that this is all part of the plan. That in the long run, it's going to help us all. And so I thank God for that. I thank God all the way to the courthouse, all the way to the jailhouse, all the way to the courtroom. I thank God. I thank God now. Because something good is going to come out of this. Amen? Right. How many here has ever had, how many here the worst day of your life became your best day? Amen. So, 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 okay. <laughs> we know that all things cooperate for the good of them who love the Lord. Who, uh, pursuant to his purpose, have now, he's now called them. So now watch this, Romans 8, 28, the Amplified Version. We are sure to know that God being a partner in their labor and all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and who are called according to his design and his purpose. Amen. Uh, so watch this down. Watch this. Here it is. There's four things I want you to do. If you answered any of those any, yes, any of those things before, this is how to have a bad attitude. I want you to take it. I want you to look at this now. And I want you to help this mark out the other ones. Ready? Number, number, number one. Focus on the future. It's not always going to be like this. Somebody said it's not always going to be like this. This will pass. I know I heard somebody say, yes, it's going to get worse. I thought I heard that. <laughs> now look at somebody and tell them it's not always going to be like this. Focus on the future. Everything God allows, always, listen carefully, you're taking notes, write this down. Everything God allows in your life points to your future. One more time. Because we want to look back. Why? 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 What did I do? What did I do? What did I say? Could I have done this? Could have, could have, could have, should have, could have, did it, would have. Everything God, remember he's a partner. Everything God allows in our lives always points to our future. Alright? Remember that. God's plan for you. There's another one, remember. God's plan for you is bigger than your problem. God's plan for you is much bigger than your problem. So number one, focus on the future. Number two, you want to have a good attitude? Focus on the solution. And that solution is, there is always an answer. No matter what, no matter how bad, no matter how bad it looks, no matter where you feel like you're standing with God now, there is always an answer. I say there's always. Always. There's always an answer. All things work together for the good. 
good. It didn't say all things work together for the bad. It didn't say all things were good. All things may not be good, but they all work together for the ultimate good. Understand. I've had some very bad things happen in my life. But later on, it might have been a blessing to me and to somebody else because I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, and can show the person how to put their t-shirt on. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, For no temptation, no trial regarding this enticing to sin, no matter how, how it comes or where it leads, has, has overtaken you or laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial comes to you that is beyond human resistance, and that is not adjusted and adapting and belonging to the human experience, such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted. Somebody say he can be trusted. He can be trusted. Not to let you be tempted and tried beyond your ability and strength and resistance and power to endure. But with every temptation, he will always, y'all say always. Always. Always provide the way out, the means of escape to a, to a landing place. That you may be capable, strong, and powerful enough to bear up under patiently. And then, number three. Look for the good in things. Look for the good in people. God is always working. God is always working for our ultimate good. Look for the good in the situation. I had somebody one time, they were, I had somebody literally complain. I, I, I kid you not. I had somebody literally complain that my attitude was too good. And I heard them. They didn't know I was listening. And they said, that man has got the best attitude. He said, matter of fact, he was pretty good in everything. And he said, I guarantee you, if that car flipped 25 times, he'd say, well, look, at least the antenna didn't get me in. <laughs> look for the good. What's wrong with that? Look for the good in everything. And then finally, look for the lesson. There's always a Bible lesson. When God allows things to happen in life, look for that lesson. There's a lesson somewhere. If He allows it, there is always, somebody say always. Always. Always a reason. I'm almost through. Get ready. I know y'all don't believe it. Watch this. Anybody got a timer? Mark it for an hour and see if I ain't through an hour. <laughs> All right. Philippians 4. I love it. Philippians 4 and 11 says, Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned and what sir said I am therewith to be content. For I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I like the Amplified version of that. It says, not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want, for I've learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed nor disquieted. And once there is that I am, I know how to be abased and to live humbly in straitened circumstances, and I know how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I've learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going with or being in one, I have strength for all things in Christ, who empowers me, for I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength. <coughs> in, uh, I am all sufficient in Christ. Sufficiency. So watch this. I'm almost through. Amen. So I say amen. Somebody else said, I don't believe it. We're going to make a believer out of it. Get ready. <laughs> I was the one that, that raised this uh, Jerry Clower the other day. <laughs> he got me laughing. <laughs> he said, Jerry Clower sitting back there somewhere. All right. Take responsibility for your attitude. It's your compass. See that compass up there? It is your compass. It's going to decide whether you're going negative or positive. Not me. I, I'm not responsible for your attitude. And you're not responsible for my attitude. We are responsible for our own attitudes. So watch this. Again, we're going to go back to that scripture that we just read. Attitude has very little, I mean very little, to do with circumstances. For I speak in respect of what I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith be content. So I'm getting ready to ask you a hard question. Get ready. It's a hard one. It's already up there. 
Is your problem really your problem? You ready? Or is it your attitude towards your problem that's your real problem? <laughs> Woo! That's a mouthful. That's a mind's full. Is your problem really your problem? Or is it your attitude towards your problem that is your problem? Because I've seen people with the same problem. I see some people thrive in that problem. I see some people die in that problem. I see some people live in the problem. Some die. So, attitude has little to do with your circumstances. Whatever state you're in, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Ah, who knew what that was? Somebody help me because I was trying to make it sound good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> Well, never mind then. I'm glad I told y'all so y'all don't think I just lost it, okay? Y'all still think that. At least now you know it weren't because of that. I, I was in line at Lowe's yesterday, and there was somebody behind me in the checkout line, and there was somebody behind there was there was the rows, and there was somebody behind that rose, and the person behind me couldn't see that person. And I turned around. And I said, You're looking good. They said, Yeah, I said, No, you can't help it. They couldn't hear anything going on. I was actually reading the man's yeah. And I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you, and all this, blah, 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 blah. And, and I turned and saw the person, I'm sorry, I'm holding the line. And she says, I'm just wanting to know, is there anybody back there? <laughs> <laughs> she said, if somebody's back there, we ain't got a problem. If there is nobody back there, can you please move? There. <laughs> okay. Your attitude, number two, your attitude can change. Just like your circumstances. For I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. And everywhere in all things I've been straight to be both full and be hungry to abound and to suffer need. In other words, it, your attitude, your attitude can change just like the circumstances. You gotta know when to hold them and you gotta know when to fold. Get ready. You gotta know when to walk away. You gotta know when to run. Alright, y'all got it now. <laughs> you never count your blessings while you're sitting. So uh, your best thing about your attitude is that it's yours. And you can choose to change. I, I talk to people all the time, and if it's a married couple or people are having differences amongst themselves, and I tell them, they say, uh, you know, uh, pray for God to change them. And I go, well, I'll pray for God to change them. But you know what? The only person that you can change is you. But sometimes that's all it needs in a relationship, whether it be marriage or boyfriend, girlfriend, or whether it be brothers and sisters or friends or whoever. You think if God would change them, the situation get better. You don't realize that, number one, only God can change you. And then they have to allow him. The only person you can change is you, and you have to allow God to change you. <laughs> but if you allow God to change you, it's amazing how sometimes the problems can be all better. This guy had a car for sale. This, this truck had had 400,000 miles on it. it was, and it was a Ford on top of that. <laughs> Somebody said it just broke in. I don't know who said that. How did I change your oil? How did I change oil? Okay. Okay. So this guy had a truck that had 400,000 miles on it. He was. He said, I got to get rid of this thing. Nobody wanted it because it had 400,000 miles on it. So he went to the man that knew how to take the speed armor and turn it back. And he got it turned back to fifty thousand miles. He got riding down the road and went back to the place where the man said, "You'll sell it if you only have fifty thousand. The man said, "You won't sell it for four hundred thousand. You better have fifty thousand. So I'll buy it." They'll jump on it then. So he goes back by the place where the man said, "If you had fifty thousand, looks in the truck says, I see you got fifty thousand. Said, "Are you ready to sell it?" He said, "Sell it." He said, "Look at this truck. How good it is. It's only got fifty thousand miles on it." <laughs> <laughs> So attitudes can be improved if you learn how. Again, attitudes are nothing more than habits of thought. 
Number three, or four. I'm, I'm getting ready to close, believe it or not. I told you I would. I'm so mixed up, I've got, I've got daylight savings lag. Anybody got that lag? Get that lag here twice a year? Uh -huh. I, sometimes I can't remember if I skip forward or skip back and I jump forward. Then I think, well, I fall, I fall forward. <laughs> then I said, no, if you actually you really, really fall out, you really fall out, you fall back. See, it always gives me a bad attitude on these things like this. I have. Attitudes have, have a source for their strength, and that is I can do all things. I have strength for all things through the Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything. I'm equal to anything through Him who infuses and strengthens me. I am self sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. It's your attitude, not your aptitude, that will determine the success in your life. One more time, listen. It is your attitude, not your aptitude. It's your attitude, not your ability, that will get you forward in life. Amen? God is watching. The, the world is watching. So here it is. Here's your king you can't. When you think about these, we're closing with these. You can't, you can't. You can't, you can't. I've got 150 items here. Ready? ready? Number one. You can't control the length of your life, but you can control its width and its depth. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a mouthful. That's like this that they see in Daniel were, and, and Sam were fixing my roof. And they all didn't hear me. They had one board standing straight up, one board laid to the side. And they said, tell Daniel how long that board is. And I said, well, it's 96 inches long. Then I went to the board laying on the side and I said, and it's also 96 inches. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, y'all got it. You can't control the length of your life, but you can't control its width and its depth. Number two, you can't control the contour of your face. Some of us, my, my mama had three, three normal children and one exceptional child. <laughs> I didn't say it was me, y'all just assumed. I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control the contour of your face, but you can control this expression. Okay? Number three. Out of 150, get ready. You can't control the weather, but you can't control the atmosphere of your mind. Positive and negative. But the water of look at the gas. God is not calling you to be anybody other than you. Did you know that? God didn't call you to be me. Somebody said, thank God. Okay, then maybe he didn't call you to be me. <laughs> God didn't call me to be anybody over here. God called David Lynn to be the best David Lynn he could be. Now, God's given you sufficient gifts for what he's called you to do. We get frustrated when we try to be like somebody else. Because we think we should have the same giftings and promptings and abilities that person has. Or that we can sometimes even learn them and some are learnable. There's stuff that's learnable. Knowledge is learnable. But there's a God gifting within us that makes us unique. It's a unique stamp. There's things that everybody in here, there's, only, there's things in here that only you can do. Did you know that? Only you. Only you. But he does want us. Not to be anybody else. But he wants us to be the best us we can be. Remember this. Next week we're going to have the Jews for Jesus here. We're following, we're going to talk about guilt and getting beyond guilt. But right now, God wants you to be the best you that you. Everybody stand. Fellas, come play some UV music. Everybody does stand. God is awesome. I told you I was almost through. Praise God.
had bowed, every eye closed. You're amongst family, you're amongst friends. There's things that happen in all of our lives that can destroy us if we let it. We don't have to let it. There's things in our life that we just give it to God and God will take care of. We just ask God to do what He can do. And we'll do what He can. We do what we can do and He'll do what He can only do. Right now in the name of Jesus. You may be here. And you may not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Before we do anything else, that's the most important. That will make or break your attitude quicker than anything. If there's anybody in here with every head bowed, every eye closed, who doesn't know Jesus as their personal Savior, but would you raise that hand? I'm not going to make a spectacle out of you. You don't even have to come up here if you don't want to. Would you just raise that hand and say, I don't know Jesus. I didn't know him before I leave this place. Maybe you're here and you walk away from him. There's no other way to describe it. You walked away. He didn't walk away from you. You walked away from him. You don't feel that strength that you used to feel. You don't feel that anointing that you used to feel. Because you and God are tight like you used to be. And I'm talking to you right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Not going to make a spectacle out of you. Not going to even make you come up here if you don't want to. And I'm talking to you right now. Nobody's looking around. Just put that hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor. I am not where I want to be with God. I'm not where I need to be. Touch Him, Lord. Touch Him right now, Lord, in a very powerful way. Make that difference that only you can make. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe you didn't realize that your attitude was a bigger problem for you than your problem. And you have to stand strong and true and trust God and walk in faith, have an attitude of faith and trust. And you're needing God right now to help you have an attitude of justice. If I'm speaking to you, but just raise a hand, nobody's looking, just say, pray for me, Pastor. I, I need an attitude of justice. I need God to help me with my attitude. Bless the Lord all over this place. Bless him. Now, if you got a need from God for anything, if you got you need God to do something for you, through you, in you, with you, I invite you to come here and pray. All that will. Come here and pray. God's got something special for you. God's got something special for you. Trust Him. Trust Him. God has got something special for you. God is in control. God's got everything under control. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. God's got everything. Everything. Everything under control. And it's not my problem that's going to get me. It'll be my attitude toward my problem. Because I have to realize once I give it to God, now it's our problem. But when it's our problem, God can do something. It's all that whole load of myself. Nothing's going to happen. But when I give it to God, now it's our problem. He'll handle it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Father. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name.
looking for something good to have tonight. Amen. I bet you had a good time in the morning. Church. 